This video is about genetics. If you haven't already watched the video called Genetics Fundamentals, you might want to go back and check that out so that the basic vocabulary and concepts that are involved in this video will be familiar to you. Genetics is the study of heredity, and heredity is just the way that traits are passed down from one generation to the next, or from parents to their offspring. Offspring means children. Traits, those that are passed down from generation to generation, are determined by your genes. And some traits are determined by just one gene, and others have many genes that influence their phenotype. Some examples of traits are hair color, hair texture, whether your earlobes are attached or not, your hairline, whether you have a widow's peak or it's straight, whether you have dimples or not, and also your eye color. Those are just a few from here up examples of traits. Heredity begins with your parents. In all human cells, we have 46 chromosomes. We got 23 from our mom and 23 from our dad. So this is the mother and she has 46 chromosomes and so does the father. And so her eggs will have half as many chromosomes as all the rest of her body cells. So her eggs have 23 chromosomes and additionally our father has 23 chromosomes in his sperm. And when the egg and sperm join and fertilize, you have an offspring that also has a unique combination of 46 chromosomes within itself, a combination of the mother's and the father's. So because you get two copies of every chromosome, you also get two copies of every gene. So here's my example. I got one version of chromosome 11 from my mom and one other version of chromosome 11 from my dad. And every chromosome has a gene that corresponds. And so here's an example um, of the TYR gene right here, which codes for the production of a protein called tyrosinase, which is important in the production of melanin, which is the brown pigment in your skin, hair, and eyes. The father of genetics is a man named Gregor Mendel. He was an Austrian monk and lived between the years 1822 and 1884. He spent his time at the monastery breeding pea plants together. And in doing so, he started to notice patterns when he bred certain plants with, plants with certain traits with plants with other traits. So, he spent a long time um, developing some pure versions of pea plants. So he developed a purely tall line of pea plants and a purely short. And when he cross-pollinated those, so like he took the pollen from one plant and put it on to the female part of the other plant, the seeds that were produced and the plants that grew from those were all tall. The second generation is called the F1 generation. So all members of the F1 generation were tall, but they were hybrids. They had genes from both parents. So it's as if this short feature just disappeared. However, when he took members of the F1 generation and cross-pollinated them together, that short phenotype appeared once more. 75% of the plants were tall, but there was that 25% minority that showed the short phenotype. Gregor Mendel studied many traits, and some of the other ones that he studied were um, whether the peas were round or wrinkled, um, whether the flowers were purple or white, and also whether the pod that the peas were in was inflated or constricted tightly around the peas. Some of the major concepts that Gregor Mendel has left us with that still apply today 
are the idea of the gene itself, which is a unit of heredity that's passed from parents to offspring. He didn't know about DNA. This was a you know, hundred years before the structure of DNA was discovered, but he did understand heredity and how genes were passed. He also developed the law of segregation, which just means that each gamete or sex cell, or a sperm or an egg, gets one copy of a gene. So here's my purebred P generation example. So if you have a homozygous purebred dominant round P, half of those, um, half of the gametes from this organism will have one of the copies of that chromosome and the other set of gametes will have the other copy. And the same is true for the wrinkled peas, which are, is the recessive allele. So you have a homozygous recessive organism and its um, gametes are both going to have the recessive allele. He also came to the conclusion by doing this that if you make these two, the offspring of purebred, also another word for that, is true breeding. So if I took this gamete and this gamete from the plant and I put them together to form an F1 generation, right? This F1 would have one copy of each gene. Furthermore, now that we know that F1 generation in his experiments had one copy of each gene, the word for that is heterozygous, meaning you have two different alleles for the same gene. And if you cross individuals from the F1 generation, right, that have the same phenotype, their offspring will have three quarters of them will be round and one quarter of them will be wrinkled. It's really great that you can use math to figure these ratios out very easily. But of the round peas, though they have similar phenotype, they don't necessarily have the same genotype. And if you work out the math, one quarter of all of the peas produced will be homozygous dominant, and half of them, two quarters, will be heterozygous. And then again, you have that extra quarter that will be wrinkly, in our case, a homozygous recessive. And it's great because you can use these concepts and concepts related to other modes of inheritance along with a tool called a Punnett square to actually be able to figure out the probability that certain phenotypes and genotypes will occur from parents to offspring. So with those tools, you can answer questions and predict questions like, if you took a tall plant and a short plant and the offspring um, had 50% tall plants and 50% short plants, what's the probability or what are the possible genotypes and phenotypes of both the parents and the offspring? Check out the next video on Punnett squares to figure out how to use that tool to answer questions like these.